Just how soon will we all be driving jet-powered cars? How soon can the lessons learned on the racetrack at Le Mans by the world's first gas turbine racer be applied to the saloon car of Mr. and Mrs. Tomorrow? These are burning questions in a Midland car factory where scientists and technicians are striving to find the right answers. These are men who deal in ten thousandths of an inch and worry about the reaction of vital engine parts in unbelievably hot temperatures. A heat exchanger is cooked, is cooked in tinfoil to ease the thirsty fuel consumption of a turbine. Other parts are tested to destruction and it's all in the interests of Mr. and Mrs. Tomorrow. Destruction isn't failure. The scientists know it will break. They want to make sure it breaks at the predicted moment and in exactly the way expected. At this very moment, our jet car is screaming along at speeds approaching 100 miles an hour and preparing to sweep round the Mulsanne corner without moving from its test bed. A complex piece of equipment can recreate the identical conditions a car will face at Le Mans and the boffins can note the efficiency of every nut and bolt built into such a revolutionary engine. Twenty-four hours continuous running, except for pit stops. Multiply that by the number of times this test bed has been used, and even then you only get a cold calculated figure to illustrate the technician's dedication to their task. It's one of those jobs when months and years of research can only seem worthwhile if car number 31 keeps on going round and round the Le Mans circuit. Everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon. And why not? Another frontier of science has fallen to the men who have the same tenacious qualities.